Hi everyone, my name is Kathleen Kaler and I am a teaching artist. Today I wanted to share with you one of my very favorite art techniques and it's called sumonagashi. It is the ancient art of marbling and it means floating ink. So that's what exactly what we're gonna be doing today is floating some ink on the surface of water and then making prints. I wanted to show you um, once you get a print, you could use it as a beautiful piece of art that you hang on your wall, or you can make them into cards. I've cut mine down and I've made them into cardstock. So you can just cut them and put them um, on top of thicker paper, depending on what you use. So this will be one of the results you can create today and then also beautiful artwork. So let's get started. I wanna show you first all the supplies you'll be needing and um, I know we're at home right now, we might not have every art supply that we need. The one thing I do, what you will have to get for this process is just the ink. Everything else we can figure out and you probably have at home. So this is what I have. It's a marbling kit made just for sumonagashi. It's my very favorite. I use it to teach sumonagashi and I also use it in my own artwork. So it's called, um, Boku Undo, and it is available on Amazon right now. Also other online resources, and I'll be sure to share those resources with you at the end of the video, um, or also written in the comments. So this is a great kit because I'm using brushes today, but if you don't have brushes, there is a little dropper at the end. So you'll be able to use this as a device to drop it onto your water. The brushes I'm gonna be using today are these round synthetic brushes. They're my favorite to use. If you have other types, like maybe more of a flat one, that'll work too, or ones with a tinier end. Um, so whatever you have at home, certainly try out. We're gonna just make do with what we have today. And I like to use the synthetic ones because it absorbs the ink really well. And another thing we're gonna be using is tap water. I have this big jug of, of water that I fill up and I just always like to have it handy because you will end up dumping your water and having to refill during the process. I also have containers which we're gonna put the water in. This one that um, is in front of me is a butcher plate that I ordered on Blick. So you're certainly welcome to order one if you wanted to find something at home, clear Tupperware is great. I stay on the lighter side so you can see all the vibrant colors swirling around when you're doing it. And since I am using brushes, I have a palette. This is a traditional student palette. If you need to find something at home, I always like to use egg curtains. And then finally, Paper. So we'll be printing on paper today. I have some construction paper. You just want something white and porous. So anything that is acid free, meaning it doesn't have a coating or anything slick on it, because if it does, the ink won't um, stick to the paper. So you do want to get something that's a little bit more porous. And I also, this is my favorite rice paper I love to print on. It's, I did order this on Amazon and I haven't found it anywhere else. So if you can find it on Amazon, um, I would order some if you're really into this. It's called Oriental Rice Paper and there is a ton of rice paper out there, but some of them will fall apart. So I'd say try to order this specific kind. And then you can also order mulberry paper, um, also sketch paper. Like I said, like anything you have at home, you can just try it out. Um, okay, oh, and then one more thing. I wanted to share the towels I use. You can use, this is gonna be um, my drying station. So you can use just dish towels or rags or any towel that you don't care about getting dirty. But these ones I got that I love because they are highly absorbent and they're basically car wash towels. So I use these for um, drying. All right, so now that we have all of our supplies and we're all set up, I'm really excited we're gonna start the process. Okay, I'm gonna start by mixing my paints and setting up my ink tray. I've got a little green and a little bit of this ink goes a long way, so I'm only gonna fill it up halfway. I'm gonna mix it with blue because it makes this really beautiful turquoise. And then I'm gonna set aside another circle for just blue. 
And you you can just start with two colors. I might add one more on the tray, just so I have it for all of our future techniques I'll be showing you. So I've got black, I've got blue, I've got turquoise. I'm gonna mix red and blue. It makes a really beautiful purple. The more red you use, the more on the pink side of the purple it will be. And the more blue you use, the darker purple it will be. So you can just play around with color mixing. Now that I have four colors set up. I'm gonna take my brushes and choose, this one's pretty big. So I think I'm just gonna go with two that are pretty much the same size and place those down. And now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my tray with water. So like I said earlier, you just need enough space for about an inch of water. And that's all filled up. And you wanna make sure that you can't see any of the surface popping through. Sometimes if there isn't enough water, you'll be hitting the surface. So we just wanna make sure that there's an overall cover of water so the ink floats really well. Next step is grabbing your brushes and you're gonna fill up both brushes with different colors. So I'm gonna start with black and blue. And I'm really gonna saturate those brushes, really fill them up with ink. All right. And the first step is just doing a very gentle tap on the surface of your water. This process was originally practiced by Buddhist monks, so it can get you in a very meditative state. For them, it was more of a ritual and it was all about the process. So it's a really beautiful practice that you could use for a moving meditation. That's why I love doing it. It just gets me in this like instant state of relaxation. So I'm just tapping, I'm, I'm alter alternating, tapping back and forth in the center. And I'm gonna show you the master technique. This type of print is what you'll see traditionally when you see a master print. Wind and water, nature, elements of nature is a really beautiful co-creator in this process. So as we're tapping the ink, it floats on water. And then if you add a little wind, I'm gonna blow on it. It creates a whole different design. So this is called the master technique. What they do is add wind and they end up with these rather jagged edges. So this is just one type of practice you can do while doing this technique. I'm gonna go ahead and take a print with my rice paper. If you do get this paper, there's a slick side and a matte side. You're gonna go ahead and print on the matte side. So you just lay it flat right on the surface and there's the print. You'll notice I just got a little air bubbles in there. That's part of the process. And you just kind of like tap the paper to close them out. There you go. So once you've made your print, the ink sticks really well onto the paper. I'm gonna move it over to my little drying station on top of my towel. And then I'm gonna take another towel and just gently pat it down. And you can find an area in your room that you can just like lay it on another table to let it dry. These, this paper dries really quickly. If you aren't using rice paper, other paper can be really delicate. So during um, the drying process, when it's really wet, be really extra careful when you're moving it to a drying station. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the traditional marbling technique. From the last print, you will notice that there's a residue of the ink left over and that's totally fine. You can keep it there. Once you start placing new ink, it will just move and it will become the background. So I'm gonna do some purple and blue. And you're gonna start again in the center, gentle taps. 
And I'm showing you a shorter version, but you can certainly spend more time on these prints. Like the first one, you can do about a hundred circles. So actually I kind of want to show you that because it does this really cool formation once you do about a hundred of them. I won't go that far, um, but I will do a lot of them so you can see. And I'm going to bring in some black. As you'll see, I'm just kind of like changing colors. I've got four different colors going on. Feel free to do as many colors as you want. And I'm gonna go back and forth with the blue and black just so you could see the rings that happen and how your design takes shape once you do more than like 20 circles. It's really cool. Um, so you'll see all of these rings and they start to form into these nature-like patterns. To me, I, I see, um, a wood grain but other people have seen thumbprints so i love that in working with nature we're starting to create shapes that look just like it right now i'm really getting that tree the tree ring by it so once you've done a good amount of circles in the center you're just going to take one of your brushes and flip it over and draw the brush right through the middle. And then you'll start to see more round edges and a traditional marble. So I'm just swirling it around and mixing it. And it's even sort of blending into the background from the old print, getting those colors being dragged through. And when you're happy with what you're seeing in front of you, you're going to take a print. I'm going to grab some rice paper. And again, you're going to want to do it on the matte side. You have this beautiful marble with that. And what's so great is once it's absorbed on this paper, it doesn't run. So I'm going to move it to my drying station. There you go. I hope you all enjoyed the Sumanagashi process with me and you're feeling relaxed. I know it's very meditative sometimes and it's brought you some joy today. So um, enjoy the process, teach it to your friends and family. If you have any questions about the technique, feel free to reach out. My information will be linked to below and I'll see you next time.